Dynamic OC Switcher is Asus's very clever way of working around one of the biggest challenges when it comes to overclocking AMD Ryzen CPUs. That is, with Precision Boost Overdrive, you get access to the highest single threaded frequencies and thus the best performance in lowly threaded applications. However, if you want to have the best performance and the best overclock for all core and multi-threaded applications, you need to do manual overclocking. So you have to compromise. Do you want to have the best single threaded performance or do you want to have the best multi-threaded performance? Dynamic OC Switcher gives us the best of both worlds as it allows the system to actively switch between Precision Boost Overdrive and Manual OC mode. As I have demonstrated in previous Scatterventure videos, DOS requires little additional configuration work. Think about DOS as follows. It is exactly like the Precision Boost Overdrive, but the lowest frequency is manually set by us. So we need to know two things. What is the lowest frequency we will allow? At which point do we want DOS to switch between PBO and OC mode? Sadly, we cannot just configure a minimum frequency and have the system switch based on that. Instead, we need to use a proxy, either a current threshold or a temperature threshold. There's not really any one specific ideal way of determining those thresholds, so I'll show you an example using Cinebench R23. For our minimum frequency, we choose our maximum stable manual overclock. I verified the maximum stable manual overclock of this CPU using Prime95 small FFTs with AVX disabled and ended up with a ratio of 46.25 for CCD0 and 45.50 for CCD1 with a core voltage of 1.345 volt. So our minimum frequency will be the average of 4625 and 4550 megahertz, so 4587 megahertz. In the operating system, we first open hardware info. We make sure we can monitor both the effective clock frequency and the CPU core current. Then we start the Cinebench R23 multi-threaded benchmark workload and change the affinity to one core in Task Manager. Now monitor the effective clock frequency. It will be higher than our target of 4,587 megahertz. Now you can gradually increase the Cinebench R23 thread count. When you reach 4,587 megahertz or below, check the CPU core current reading. This value will be our input for the DOS current threshold. As you can see, I'm not enabling threads sequentially. That's because as some cores are better than others, they will boost to higher frequencies. So I want to make sure that I'm not too conservative when picking the right switching point. I checked which cores are the best by running the core cycler application and checking the peak effective clock using hardware info. In our case, we reached the frequency of 4,587 MHz at seven active threads. The current varies between 43.7 and 51.5 amps. So to be on the safe side, we pick 47 amps as the current threshold. So to reiterate what's happening, dynamic OC switcher will switch between OC mode and precision boost overdrive when the CPU current hits 47 amps. Anything above 47 amps will engage manual OC mode. Anything below 47 amps will engage precision boost overdrive. As for the precision boost overdrive settings, we just copy the configuration from our previous OC strategy. Upon entering the BIOS, go to the extreme tweaker menu. Enter the CPU core ratio per CCX submenu. Set core VID to 1.345. Set CCD0 CCX0 ratio to 46.25. Set CCD1 CCX0 ratio to 45.50. Set dynamic OC switcher to enabled. Set current thresholds to switch to OC mode to 47. Set calibrated temperature threshold to switch back to 90. 